WA is home to the largest and healthiest temperate woodlands left on the planet. And I bet very few of us were aware of that. Uh, Dr. Alexander Watson is from the Wilderness Society and can uh, reveal where we'll find those woodlands. Uh, Dr. Watson, good morning. Good morning, James. So, yeah. whereabouts will we find these magnificent woodlands that are so rare? Oh, well, they're located between Esperance and Kalgoorlie and east of the railroad fence, which is just to the east of Hyden. Um, they're twice the size of Tasmania, and as you said, they're the largest temperate woodland left on the planet. And uh, don't tell me, we're, we're making the most of destroying them. Well, at the moment, unfortunately, the woodlands are under threat. They're under threat because of uh, uncontrolled wildflower, wildfire fires. They're also under um, threat because of cats and dogs and foxes that are currently being ma- unmanaged. And most importantly, they're under threat because the area is actually not being managed for, uh, appropriately. Currently, 60% of the area is what is considered unallocated crown land. Yeah. It's basically, it means that very little money spent on the management of these really, really important issues, and, and unfortunately, they're slowly but surely being degraded. So how, how do we manage it properly? What would you like to see done? Well, the most important thing is to work with all stakeholders in the area. So traditional owners, mining companies, local communities, four-wheel drive clubs, APRS, really need to get together and be led by government into... Um, into a new management plan for the region. We don't have the exact answers to the how to actually appropriately manage it, and we would not never actually try to tell people how to manage what is, in fact, their bush. But ultimately speaking, we sit there and believe that with an appropriate management plan um, led by government, you, you could see a real change in philosophy. This is something that Western Australia should be really proud of. This is the largest temperate woodland on, on Earth. If you actually went to anywhere in Asia, North America, South America, and Africa... These, these woodlands have been heavily degraded. Yeah. So Western Australia, in its backyard, has an incredible space. It's another example of how we, we tend to neglect nature at our peril. I mean, if you ask most people what do you think temperate woodland looks like, for example, I reckon, you know, 9 out of 10 wouldn't have a clue. Well, that's an excellent question and an excellent statement. The fact is, temperate woodlands is an ecological term. It's very similar um, to a forest, just a little bit um, more widely spaced and has an understory of shrubs and wildflowers. So uh, it, it's incredible. What I often get asked in my job is, out, out beyond, out near Esperance and out near Kalgoorlie is just scrub, isn't it? And when I sit there and tell them that, no, there's actually ancient trees out there, they are, they are truly astounded. Well, yeah, I mean, it, the, the trouble is, it doesn't necessarily look the most beautiful. Or, or am I being stupid here? Come on. Oh, well, I'll, to be honest with you, I wouldn't ever, would never say, James, you're being stupid, but I'd say that if you ever get a chance to drive the Hyde and Northern Road yeah. in the late afternoon, you'll be absolutely astounded by the colour and the beauty of the trees. You've got yes. 300 species of tree that occurs there. There's incredible colours that go through it. And if you actually get a chance to stand on top of that granite dome, it's a, it's a magical experience because you're surrounded by Aussie bush, an Aussie bush that's looked like this for the last 10,000 years. So it's a unique opportunity, and I've, I've often taken visitors out there and put them on top of the granite domes, and they keep saying, hmm. nowhere else in the world will you, can you look in all directions yes. around you and see bush. Well, th- I mean, th- this is a fantastic point you're making. I'm very interested to see whether the, the people of WA can, can hand on heart say that they've really heard of the great western woodlands that they've ever visited them they, they've actually stood on these granite domes that you were talking about and experienced it firsthand i would like to hear from you one three hundred triple two seven twenty in terms of exploiting what great things we have here in wa nature wise this is another another example isn't it of how we have this uh yeah gold mine if you know what i mean yeah. on our on our doorstep and we do so little with it how could we actually make the most of something like this in a, in a tourism way? Oh, it's got excellent opportunities for tourism. People already drive to Hyden to go and see Wave Rock and they go to see Kalgoorlie and check out the town of Kalgoorlie. If, every, if people started to, to realise that, um, as I say, the Hyden Northern Road is an incredible road to drive along, to sit there and see this spectacular beauty, if they sat there and started promoting the fact that Western Australia has the, the largest temperate woodland on the planet, home to more than 3,000 species of plant, um, hundreds of species of animal. If they actually sat there and, and acknowledged that actually this area is really, really special, I believe there's a, an excellent opportunity for tourism, is, the tourism industry out there. What do you think that we could discover if we, you know, as you're saying, some of these trees, some of the wildlife there is thousands of years old. What do you think there is there to discover? Oh, there's lots to discover. Science... Scientists are really, really interested in this area because it is so large and there's such a differentiation between the wheat belt 
along one side of the railroad-proof fence and um, the green bush on the other. For example, Professor Tom Lyons at Murdoch University is doing an excellent study looking at cloud formation and showing incredibly that clouds form more readily above the green um, of the bush than it does above the wheat belt. And that's because of the colour of the ground and the way the colour actually reflects light back, on, back into space. So to actually start realising that things like clearing the enormous amount of bush that we have in the wheat belt could have actually impacted our climate is actually an incredible discovery. And I think yeah. there, is, there is unique opportunities all over the place. We're working very closely with the Australian Museum, who's very interested in looking at the genetic diversity of many of these species. In fact, it's a hotspot for eucalypt diversity. We're, 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 we're actually seeing species evolve in front of us. This is a unique opportunity to sit there and see how species evolve in the face of climate change. Yeah. So there are, there are lots of really interesting questions that can be, can be asked in this landscape. And currently we've got affiliations with CSIRO, the Australian Museum, Australian National University, Carl University, the University of Queensland, and DEC, the Department of Environment and Conservation, all trying to sit there and establish research priorities in this area because it is just so important. Well, fantastic. And it sounds like the, the bird life is pretty good as well, <laughs> listening to you on the phone. Oh, magnificent. I'm a bird watcher, so um, I, I regularly go out there and, and go um, twitching, so to speak, and the records for that in that region are, are phenomenal. You get very rare parrots that occur out there. Scarlet-chested parrots have been recorded out there. In fact, an extinct bird known as the night parrot, I only heard yesterday there are records in the Department of Environment and Conservation within the Great Western Woodlands for flocks of up to 30 of this species. Wow. So, so it's actually, it's, it's basically, it's unknown. It's, the incredible thing is, for so long, people have never really understood that there's such such a huge amount of bush out there, and I think it's with the advent of um, satellite imagery that people can start looking and going, oh my, oh my lord, there's actually a huge, huge uh, chunk of green. So yeah. I suggest to every every one of your listeners tonight, if they can look at the Weather Channel on um, one of the news tonight, and if it's a satellite image, have a look at Southern Western Australia, and you'll see something that is not on anywhere else in Australia, which is a big block of green, which represents one of the most diverse and outstanding um, communities left on Earth.